Good morning, kids. Um, sorry about the mistake today. I uh, like all things in Google Classroom, I'm learning, and I realized I hadn't scheduled those uh, assignments to actually be released at eight o'clock this morning like the other days. And so um, those are now up on Google Classroom, and I decided just to re record kind of what I did before to like clarify a couple of those things. Um, so uh, today is part one of your text. Uh, and when I say part one, it's you have three days to complete three pages front and back. And so if you're a person who like really wants to just go to town and do all of it in one day, you may. I would recommend not doing that. You have plenty of other work to do. And so I tried to chunk it out. So instead of having like one class period to do all of it, you have three days technically plus the weekend to work on it. Because I know that I'm, we're not there and I know a lot of you have been having trouble with a lot of things, especially because it's been a month. So I wanted to give you plenty of time to do it. Um, so, uh, I know that we, or I just want to briefly go over the study guide day two answers to help you kind of with your uh, preparation for the test. And um, remember, I'd like to see what you can do on the test. I'd prefer if you, you know, didn't just copy from your study guide or copy from your notes. I want you to try to do it on your own. If there's something where you're just feeling really lost and you want to like double check something, that's okay, you have that resource, but I'd really like to see, I just wanna know what you know, and um, not necessarily what you've already written down in your study guide. So, and I'll be able to see that too, because you'll be turning those in when we exchange papers on Monday. Um, I'll be able to see what you did for the study guide as well as the test. And so, I mean, I can take both of those things into account. Okay, very briefly, um, I wanna look at this. This was part two of our study guide. This, those lit terms that we talked about, those were on the, the video from Monday. Um, an example, so for the soliloquy, an example of that would be Brutus's soliloquy or monologue in Act Two, where he's deciding whether or not he wants to join the conspiracy. Uh, foreshadowing, there's a lot. Uh, Calpurnia's dream, um, where they saw all the omens in the street, like the lion that didn't attack anybody, the, man, the slave's hand that was put in the fire, but it didn't burn. Um, those hundred women who said they saw men walking through the street on fire, and then owls in the night, or like night owl, night birds in the day. So like night birds at, during the day. Yeah, owls out during the day. Beware the Yides of March. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you could use. So any of those are really good examples of foreshadowing. It's just a hint of what's to come, which is, the death of Caesar. Another really good hint of foreshadowing could be um, Caesar's ghost, who goes and talks to Brutus and says, I'll see thy at Philippi, which kind of is hinting toward possibly Brutus's death, which those of you who read Act 5, and I'll just tell you right now, Brutus dies in the end at Philippi. Okay, uh, dramatic irony, number the third one. Again, there's a bunch of those, um, such as when I think it's Trebonius who has the aside, who's like, you're gonna wish I had been farther away because I'm gonna stab you. Uh, Beware the Ides of March that the soothsayer says. Calpurnia's dream about the you know, people bathing in Caesar's blood. I really hope your parents aren't watching this because then they're thinking, thinking, Mr. Well, what are you teaching these kids? Um, Elaine, any time that we know, and it can be big picture dramatic irony, we know Caesar's gonna die and he doesn't. Or it can be very small things, like I said, um, where Decius comes to bring Caesar to the capital, the day they're gonna assassinate him, and he says, hey friend, come with me friend, I'll bring you to the capital, friend. Or when he reinterprets Calpurnia's dream to be positive instead of negative. All of this we know Decius is part of the conspiracy and Caesar doesn't. So again, dramatic irony is where the audience knows something that it, just one character in the play doesn't. So. Um, since we know that Decius is not a true friend, that's something we know that Caesar doesn't know. Okay. Lastly, uh, we have verbal irony. And my favorite example of this is, um, but Brutus says he, uh, Caesar was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. This is the very, very, very famous speech by Mark Antony that begins friends Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise them. Um, that's where the, his like rebuttal, his where he is going back against what Brutus had said. That's one of your best examples of verbal irony because 
he, even though we might think that Brutus is an honorable man, the way that Mark Antony is saying it is that he does not think that. He's saying the opposite of what he means. He means he thinks that Brutus is not honorable because he conspired to kill Caesar. Okay. Um, Shakespeare's language. These are some of my favorites too. Uh, so Jan Cassius, that first one down here. Jan Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Uh, I hinted at this in the last video if you were paying attention, but Julius Caesar says that, and he says that very early on. Um, when he sees Cassius and Brutus, like having their own little aside, he's like, I don't like that guy. He's skinny. He thinks too much. Uh, let me have men around me that are fat. And we talked about that really early on that Caesar's kind of hinting at that he wants men around him that drink and eat and party because then they're not thinking too much and trying to work against Caesar and undermine, undermine his power. And so the metaphor is that if you are skinny, that you're not as concerned with partying and drinking, which means you might be more concerned with undercutting Caesar's power. Does that make sense? Fat men just like to party. Skinny men have more devious thoughts in their head. And so um, that it is basically Caesar saying, I don't trust that guy, which we know he shouldn't. Okay. And then next one is et tu brute, then fall Caesar. I hope you know that that's Julius Caesar. Caesar says that. It's the last line he says before he dies. Um, and the meaning is, we talked about how him and Brutus were actually quite close. Um, and Caesar was a friend of Brutus's mother for a very long time. And um, so we know that they had a very close relationship, almost like uncle to, you know, to nephew or like father to son, like, like he was somebody who helped him out. And so um, et tu Brute means and you Caesar, like, or and you Brutus, even you Brutus, even you my son. If you're here killing me, if you're one of the conspirators, then maybe I should just die. And so it's like the final straw that broke the camel's back, if you know that idiom. It's like the last straw. He says, okay, I know Cassius doesn't like me. I know Cinna doesn't like me. I know Cassius doesn't like me. Oh, wait, Brutus, you're doing this too? Well, apparently I should just die then, is kind of that meaning. Even you, my son, even you, my friend, Brutus, are part of this conspiracy. Meaning, well, it's time for me to fall then. Okay. I already mentioned this one. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Um, that is Mark Antony. And that is his famous speech that he says right after Brutus gives his speech at Caesar's funeral. And um, he kind of, we did this with Cassius, he soft pedals, meaning he comes in kind of slowly because everybody in the crowd at the time that Antony starts speaking is on Brutus's side. Everybody is saying, yeah, Brutus, you should have killed Caesar. He would have been a tyrant. He is terrible. And so Mark Antony, knowing he, he knows the crowd, like he's paying attention to the crowd, the crowd is not on Antony or Caesar's side at this moment. So he says, oh, hey, everyone, I'm on your side. I come to put Caesar away. I'm not here to praise him. I'm not here to contradict what you guys think. And then through the course of that speech, he slowly wins them back over to his side that Caesar was actually honorable and Caesar shouldn't have been killed. And so by him saying, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him, He's originally starting out on the, yeah, Caesar should have died side. And then slowly through the power of his speech, which is one of our essay questions, he's able to win people over back to his side that Brutus wasn't honorable, if that makes any sense. Um, that one's a little bit, that one's tough. And so um, it's all about that idea of, he knows that the crowd is on Brutus' side to begin with when he's starting his speech, so he knows that he can't immediately say, Brutus is terrible. Brutus shouldn't have killed Caesar because they're on Brutus's side right now. That's not going to convince them of anything. But if he slowly like says, hey, you know, I'm on your side. I see what you're thinking. I totally get it. However, however, and then he slowly gives all these examples of how Caesar actually wasn't ambitious. Caesar cared for the men of people of Rome. Caesar you know, fought for the people of Rome, Caesar wept for the people of Rome, 
slowly these people are convinced, oh wait, Brutus isn't right, okay? Email me or gchat me if you have any questions, but basically it's Antony's playing to the crowd and he knows what the crowd thinks right now and he needs to move them into his side of thinking. Uh, and then the next line is still by Antony, yet Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. Um, Brutus is known as an honorable man. However, he, through verbal irony, continues to bring up examples of maybe how killing Caesar was not honorable. And so he is, through verbal irony, saying actually Brutus is not, a, not an honorable man because he killed a good man, Caesar. Um, so he's kind of undercutting the argument that Brutus had just made in the speech right before Antony's, okay? And then the last one is one we didn't get to read, and I love this line. It's a very good line. Um, so if you were like, I didn't know who did this, Ms. Doyle, well, it's okay. I mentioned it yesterday in the video um, that this is what Brutus says right before he kills himself. Um, and 